Uh, let's look at how reefs actually get built. Okay, and then we'll look at locations on the reef and then types of reefs. So a reef is a huge structure. And the Great Barrier Reef is hundreds of miles long. Um, you know, it's several feet high, many feet high. So it's a huge structure. Um, but the living part of the reef is actually only on the very, very surface. Okay, so the rest of that big old structure is actually dead. It's the remnants of dead coral, the skeletons of dead coral, and also like algae and then shells of other things. Okay, so the only the very very surface of the reef is growing. So if you look at this, okay, the picture on the left is to, left is to show you that like this is all the dead part, and then the living part would just be right here at the very surface. And then if you kind of like blew up a piece of coral and looked at it really closely, this is what you would see. So the green and the red is the living tissue on the surface, and then all the white stuff, that's the skeleton. Okay, so that's the only part that's alive. This is all skeleton. And the skeleton is what I passed around to you so you can see. Okay? So the living part's just on the very surface. So how do how do these like little tiny animals that only live on the very surface form this big gigantic reef? Well, <coughs> there's two phases to reef formation. You have a constructive phase and a destructive phase. Okay, a constructive phase is going to be where the little coral larva settles down and then starts growing into the new coral colony. Okay, so that's going to be the constructive phase. The destructive phase is called bioerosion. Okay, another term for it is bioerosion. Here's what happens. So you get this lovely coral that grows up, becomes a nice coral colony. Okay, and so this is going to be my coral colony. Okay, so it's growing, it's nice. Um, and you get all sorts of like boring organisms. Not like boring, like, oh, I'm so bored, but like they burrow into things. Okay, so. You get like boring sponges and clams and worms and stuff that will actually burrow into the base of coral colonies. Okay, so they burrow down into the base of the colonies, and when they do that, they create like little holes here. Okay, and those little holes weaken the base of the coral. So now, when you get a storm that comes, that coral colony is weakened and it falls over. Okay, so it falls over. Um, and Boring organisms continue to work on this, and just natural erosion of like pounding of waves will break this down even further, break it into smaller pieces. Now remember how we talked about there's four things that help to build the reef. The coral is the main one, but then you've got coralline algae, green, calcareous green algae, and then shells of animals. Yeah. Okay. So as this breaks down, okay, there's still going to be like cracks and stuff like that. Um, you're going to get like calcareous green algae and then also shells of stuff that are going to come and like fill in, help to fill in the gaps. Okay, um, so those are going to come and kind of like help to fill in the gaps. And then you get coralline algae, the red algae, that grows over the surface of it. Okay, and that coralline algae is going to kind of take all of this like now sand and shells and pieces of coral, grow over the top of it and cement it all together. Okay, so it's going to cement it all together. Now you have a new hard surface for another little coral larva to come and settle down and start growing into a new colony. Okay, and then the boring organism. Okay, and so you start to get layers and layers and layers and layers that form on top of each other as corals die, get broken down, and then cemented together and built on top of. Okay, so that's the constructive, destructive phase of reef formation. So with that, with those two phases, that's how you can get these big, gigantic structures of reefs. Kind of cool, huh? And how these little tiny animals can actually make those. Um, so let me show you some pictures to help you see this. Okay, so here's our coral colony with the little animals burrowing into the base. Okay, and then storm comes and knocks it down. Okay, and so here's like your coral continuing to get broken down and then you get like uh, and stuff like that and other algae, the green algae coming in to help to fill in the spaces. Okay, here's your shells. Okay, and then the um, coralline algae growing over the surface, new hard surface for little larvae to settle down and start growing again. All right? Okay. Now that's what it looks like. So the other most important reef builder besides the coral 
is your coralline algae. Bless you. It is the coralline algae. It is the glue that holds that reef together. So it holds all of that sediment and broken pieces of coral all together. So how fast a reef can grow will be dependent on how fast the coral can grow. Um, and how fast the coral can grow is dependent on how fast it can lay down its skeleton of calcium carbonate, a limestone, pretty much. Um, so there are several things that affect how fast a coral can grow. And these are the things. So obviously, hopefully, obviously, light is a big one. Okay, because coral have their zooxanthellae, and their zooxanthellae provide most of the energy. So if the coral has enough light, zooxanthellae can do photosynthesis fast enough to provide enough energy for the coral to grow quickly. Okay, so the amount of light that the coral gets is a factor that influences how much, how fast that coral grows. Um, because these corals do need light, that's why you only find them like on the continental shelf okay, or around islands because the islands create like a, a shallow place in the open ocean. So it allows for them to be attached to a surface and still be exposed to the sunlight. The species of the coral is also going to affect how fast the coral grows. So massive corals, those are like the big brain corals, the big round ones. Those grow much more slowly than like the branching corals, which would be like these, okay? Those, uh, they grow, the branching corals don't need to deposit as much of a like giant skeleton, right? As the, the massive corals do, so they can grow faster than the massive corals. Um, also biological interactions are going to affect how fast that coral can grow. So um, there's always a huge competition for light and for space on the reef, okay? So light because they need the light to do photosynthesis and to survive, okay? And then space because they need a space to settle down and attach to, right? And then start growing. And then if they're growing next to another coral, and like they can be competing for light, right? So these are my toys. Okay, we're gonna play with these to explain this. Um, so like if this coral starts to grow over this one, okay, this coral gets upset. It's like, hey, get out of my light, right? And so he's like, all right, then I'm going to attack you okay, and get, get you out of my way. And so this guy is going to extrude his mesenteric filaments and start digesting some of the coral polyps that are right here on the edge. Okay? And so this guy can attack back and they can go back and forth. So if they are living in a place where they are like, in a lot of competition for space and for light, uh, and they're constantly like, having these battles, uh, that will take a lot of energy away from the coral being able to grow because they're going to have to put a lot of energy into repairing the damage that's been done. Okay, so if they live in a place where there's lots of like fighting going on, then um, they're going to have to put more energy into defense and to repair than growing. So that's why um, that'll affect the growth rate. Wave strength is also going to affect how fast a coral can grow. So if a coral is, a, is in an area on the reef where you get a lot of waves that break right there, um, they're going to need to have a stronger skeleton to survive okay, and not just get broken to pieces. So the coral is going to be putting more energy into strengthening and like bulking up its skeleton rather than putting it into new growth. Okay, So the wave exposure is going to affect the animal. All right? If they live in a place where there's not a lot of wave exposure, they don't need a big bulky skeleton so they can put more energy into just like branching and growing and being all lacy and pretty. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, temperature will also affect them. Uh, I think you need to make a space for this in your notes. Okay? Um, temperature, so they need to be between 68 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the species of coral. Um, and if they get outside of that temperature range, typically what happens is they get too hot, uh, then they can undergo this process called bleaching. Okay? And what happens is 
when they get too warm, okay, corals actually will expel their zooxanthellae, okay, meaning like they kick them out. Um, and it's called bleaching because corals actually get their color from the zooxanthellae that live inside their tissues. So the coral animals, most of them, many of them are clear, and the skeleton is white. So the only reason why you don't just see like the white skeleton underneath is because of the zooxanthellae that live inside the coral. So when those corals kick out the zooxanthellae, clear animal, white skeleton, what's left it looks white. Okay? And so we call it bleaching because it literally looks like you took the coral and dipped it in bleach and got rid of all the color. Okay? Uh, and we don't really exactly know why they do this. Because to us, it doesn't seem to make sense, right? It's like, okay, so you're under stress because you're too warm, so you kick out your main source of food. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh-huh. Um, we don't really know why they do it. We think, we theorize that maybe it's to like try and uptake a different kind of zooxanthellae that's more tolerant of the temperature, maybe, but that doesn't seem to ever work. So, um, yeah, we don't really exactly know why they do it. Do you have a question? Um, let me show you the different types of coral and then we'll look at what bleaching looks like. So these are the different types of coral shapes. So you have plate corals, fallacious, columnar, branching. Here's your massive corals. Okay, there's your free living that's like the little mushroom guy. Okay, um, And then encrusting grows over the surfaces of things. Okay, so those are the different types of corals, and these will all have different growth rates. So like the massive coral, the big brain coral will grow more slowly than the branching coral. Okay, um, here's pictures of actual coral, so you can see them. So the massive coral, branching coral, fallacious, um, columnar. Okay, here's the encrusting coral. Uh, this is the plate coral, and then this is the free living. That's that one, just alive with the tentacle sticking out. Okay, so you can see it. Kind of cool, huh? So those are the, the different kinds of corals. Bleaching. So um, this is when the corals expel their zooxanthellae. Okay, and here's what happens. So in a healthy coral, you have your skeleton underneath, and then this part right here that represents the uh, this represents like the coral animal. Okay, and notice the green dots inside of there. That's the zooxanthellae. So in healthy coral, you got the coral with the zooxanthellae inside, colored, okay, it's pretty, it's all nice and green, at least for this picture. Okay, in bleaching, okay, the coral kicks out the zooxanthellae, right, so all the dots are outside here now, see? And so here's the coral animal, no zooxanthellae inside, see through to the white skeleton, it looks bleached. So here's an actual picture of it. Of actual coral. So you can see it literally looks like you took and dipped it in bleach. All right. They can re-uptake their zooxanthellae if the water temperature goes back down, but um, not always. Okay. Locations on the reef. So I'm going to let you comment.